Thank you. You're forgetting something. I'm 91. I'm fighting 92. If you keep on uh, clapping hands, I'll be 92 where I get up here. Uh, I'm glad to be here. God bless you. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. I've been sitting back there in that little room in the side, waiting for the last hour. The choir members back there, all of us, nothing going on. And uh, finally we got a little bit of it, but not very much. And I've been waiting to get out of here. And I'm glad to be here. God bless your hearts. What a joy to be with you. And thank you from my heart for your kindness. And thank you for remembering the great ministry of Jack Hiles, my great friend. And my, I could say so many wonderful things about him. But I want to thank you for every kindness given to me in this time. And God bless your hearts. And God bless every one of you. Open your Bible to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Uh, sweetheart, my wife, would you stand for you, honey? I'd like to make sure you know you're here. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. We've been, we've been married about 150 years. But uh, we're still going. And God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. And I praise God for this church and for your ministry and for the, work, the past and for the present moment right now, what's going on in this place. And thank God for all of it. John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go you, you, can, you uh, whether I go you know in the way you know. Thomas said, "Then Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way?" Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I am the way." I want you to hold that in your mind. You're thinking for tonight, as we think about this hour, about the greatness of your past. Dr. Howes, and the greatness of this present day, what you're doing now. Thank God for all of it. But I want you to think about what the Lord has said to us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. We live in a world of excitement. Excitement about things that are happening overseas, here in this country, everywhere. And the news and the events come by radio and television, daily newspapers, and at home and in our nation, we're hearing about all the things. But my friends, the Bible is the most exciting book in the world. Without any question, the Bible is the most exciting book in the world. Put together all of the libraries, to put together all of the public, modern day publications, Put together all of the newspapers, put together all of the magazines, put together all of the libraries of the world, and here's the greatest book of all. And my friend, we need to see that and hold to it. This is God's holy word. The Bible is a stirring story. Here's the history of the past, Abraham. Back to Adam and Eve and all the way through. Here's the prophecy, the prophecy of the future. The things that will come, take place, the tribulation, the coming of our Lord, all of it. Here are the promises of, that are exciting. Lo, I am with you always. The exciting promises. Here's the working of God. And that's exciting, how God works. And uh, we're to be in conscious of Him always, not forget Him. Beware lest you forget the Lord. Keep Him in your mind and heart. Now, the life of the Christian. This is a life of excitement. If you're a child of God, you should be excited. Never get over it. This life has many difficulties, many heartaches, many sorrows, many tears. But in and all, you can have Christ as your Savior. 
and eternal life is your reward forever and forever to be with Him. And you can rejoice. Older people need excitement. I need excitement. 91 years of age. Soon to be 92. And I get it from the Word of God. From the promises of my blessed Lord, I have all I need for today and for tomorrow. Now, I want you to think about this exciting life. This life is exciting. Thank God. What is it? This is a life of faith. The life of faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus said, have faith in God. The promises for today, now, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We're never alone. In the darkest hour, He is with us. In the time of trouble, He is with us. Here the promise of the future. I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. The life of faith, the life of faith. Here the promise that does supply all of your needs. The Word of God says it. He'll supply them all. Here's the business of doing what God wants you to do. And I will forget. When God impressed me to start Tennessee Temple Schools in Chattanooga, which became Tennessee Temple University now, but I was impressed to begin. Didn't have a penny of money. But I believed God. I said, Lord, show me. Give me evidence of what you want me to do. I was walking down the street, down the Orchard Knob Avenue. Now, you folks in Tennessee would know that there's language. Walking down Orchard Avenue, met a lady just back from a mission field in Africa. And I had in my heart, I want to start a school. Dear Lord, give me some evidence of what I should do. And she stopped. I stopped and talked with her. We talked about Africa, about her missionary work in Africa. And then she started believing and said, Just a moment, I have something for you. She said, I want to give you a $1,000 check. And the missionary back in that days would get him only $75 a month. Many of them. But she would save the money and said, I want you to use this in the way that you see fit. That was the evidence I had for the starting Tennessee Temple University. And I began with that $1,000 from that missionary. I'm saying that we need and trust God for every single thing that we need in life. And know that God will be with us. And this life is a life of faith in God. And that's exciting. Have faith in God. Live by faith. Walk by faith. Talk by faith. Rejoice in the Lord. Praise God for all He gives you. A life of faith. Secondly, this exciting life is a life of prayer. First, this exciting life is a life of faith. Second, is a life of prayer. The Bible said pray without ceasing. And we're to be in prayer in this exciting life of our living for God all the time. I used to hold meetings in Evansville, Indiana, the old rescue mission. They had a man named Dr. Ernest Reveal, head of that mission. A crippled man. Could not walk without crutches. Had to have them. And yet a great, great leader, a great preacher. But I watched him get on his face and pray. Couldn't get up without help. Somebody had to help him crutch it on the ground the floor. And pray and call upon God. And ask God for things that he needed. And pray about money and about the needs of the mission. And then get up with my help and help others get the crutches under his arms. Old Ernest revealed. And I've many of them heard of the answers to the prayers of that man. Money came in from everywhere. People gave and they rejoiced in giving. He would live life. He believed in prayer. He believed that God answered prayer and God does answer prayer. You can rest upon it and you can know it. Lester Wolof was a great friend of mine. Many of you knew him, didn't you? But primarily, Lester Wolof was a man of prayer. Primarily. I, I, I wouldn't count him a great preacher, a good preacher, but not a great one. I wouldn't think he was a great administrator, but he was a great man of prayer. And he prayed. And God answered his prayer. And great things happened through Lester Wolof. And still going on today. He's going on to heaven, but his radio broadcast still going on today. I think of Dr. John R. Rice, a man of prayer. He wrote a book on prayer, a beautiful book on prayer. But a primary, he himself was a man of prayer. Belonged to my church, Highland Park, for many years. Then moved his membership up to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where he lived. 
But he wrote the book on prayer, the exciting life of prayer. Now, my dear friend, this means to be your life. A life of faith in God. A life of prayer under God. Thank God for praying people. For praying people. People who believe God and trust God and know that God will be with them in every way. And know that God answered prayer. Beginning of my ministry, I was called to preach. When the Germantown, Tennessee, on the edge of Memphis, and began, they paid me $50 a month, total salary. And I had to pray and ask God to supply it. And He did. I, I had no money. I went into Memphis and rented a room in the attic of an old house, way up in the top, far, far away, three or four flights of stairs to get up to, up to the room. And I prayed, Oh, God, help me. Fifty a month, fifty a month. I ate my meals at the hamburger stand. Hamburgers were nickel apiece. That's a long time ago. But I waited. But one morning I got out of the little attic room. Under the door was an envelope, a white envelope. I picked it up, nothing on the outside. I opened it up, and inside, inside was a dollar bill, a whole dollar. I walked out in the hallway of that big home, and I said, Did somebody lose anything, any money? No one said a word. I said, It must be mine. Under my door. I went down and ate two more hamburgers. I said, Now, this is living. This is living. I'm going somewhere. And every morning, every morning in that little attic room, I'd get up, pick up a white envelope with a dollar bill in it. Finally, I fixed a little trap. I said, now, if they touch that door in the slightest, it'll knock my trap over, it will wake me up. I fixed it just right, went to bed and went to sleep. About two in the morning, my trap fell over. I jumped up, went to the door and jerked it open. There's a little lady there with the envelope in her hand getting ready to put it on the door. She straightened up a soul and said, son, here's your money. If you ever tell a soul, never give you another penny. I said, don't worry. I won't tell a soul. That little lady was Mrs. Tate Barker. Watch it now. The wife of the president of the University of Kentucky. Famous. He passed away. She moved to Memphis. Lived in the, in the home downstairs in the beautiful part. That I live up in the attic. She said, that boy needs help. She could tell him. She saw him go to the hamburger stand every morning, and she began to put a dollar on the door. My total salary from the church was 50 a month, 50 per month, and she would give me a dollar every morning. And I'd get along beautifully. Had a great, great time together. But wait a minute. I'm pointing out this fact that God knows, and the exciting life is the life of prayer. Exciting life in faith, have faith in God. Exciting life in prayer, praying always with all prayer supplication. Exciting life in believing God and trusting God for every single need of your life. Know that God will be with you, will supply your need. Then again, the exciting life is a life of waiting. A life of prayer, a life of study, but a life of waiting. Jesus said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I'm waiting for His coming. He is coming again. He cannot lie. He may come at any moment. He can come tonight. He can come tomorrow. He can come any time. And I'm to be so living every day that I'm ready for the coming of my Lord. I will come again. That makes life exciting. I like the uncertainty of it. I know what's going to happen. You don't know either. He may come tonight. He may come in the morning. But He's coming. And we should know it. And here's the exciting life of waiting for Him to keep His promise that He will come. And when He comes, there will be a rapture. The dead in Christ shall be raised. The living shall be changed. And together we're caught up in the air to meet Him. There's the resurrection of those who died in Christ. And there's the reign with Christ for a thousand years upon the earth. The everlasting life. The exciting life is a life of waiting, waiting upon God and knowing that God will be with you. Now get ready to meet Him. It may be today, it may be tonight. He's coming. He can come at any moment. He may be at any single time. That makes it exciting. Exciting for young people, exciting for old people. He may come. Now live for Him every day. Don't waste today. Young people, don't waste today. Old folks, don't waste today. 
I'm just saying, young folks, watch yourself. Don't throw away your time. Time is precious. Live every life for God, every moment for God. Witness for Him every day. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Tell people of your faith in Christ. Tell them of their need of the Savior. Tell them what He'll do for them. Keep on looking for His return. He cannot lie. He said, I will come again. At any moment, immediately, we can praise God and be ready. He may come. Pray and wait for His, His answer to your prayers. Have faith in God. Have faith and know that God will be with you. Pray. Young people, troubled people, sick people, He's coming again. The exciting life. The life of prayer. But another, the exciting life, the life of witnessing. That's exciting. That's exciting. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Acts 28. A witness tells what he knows. Are you saved? Tell what you know. What the devil am of God. Witnessing is God's command. And to be an obedient Christian, I've got to witness. I've got to tell others what Christ has done for me. And witnessing is exciting. Remember what we have, a message of Christ. His life, exciting. He gave it. He said, come unto me all ye that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. He gives it to all of us. And the call is given from the Word of God. And we can rejoice in that. It works. Right? Witness is exciting. Yeah. Have no fear about when people come to Christ, something happens. And will take change in their life. And a complete revolution of all their thinking and doing will be brought about. The exciting life, the life of witnessing. Sometimes it may be difficult, but keep on. Then witnessing is compassionate. Compassionate. We're driven by our own love for Christ, our love for the lost soul. We want to see people saved. I met a fellow the other day, kind of an humble looking little fellow. But he had a great big Bible. I mean a big one, big heavy Bible. Carrying it under his arm. And I stopped in and talked with him. And I said, uh, God bless you. I know you love the Lord. He said, yes, I do. I witness all of the time. I tell people of Christ the Savior. He said, I write the name in the back of my Bible when I win one to the Lord. I said, may I see your Bible? I took that big Bible he'd carried under his arm, a strange man. I opened it up. In the back were name, name, after name, name, after name. I turned to the front of it on the covers, name, after name given. I said, these are people. He said, these are people to whom I've witnessed and have told about Christ. And on their knees, they accepted Jesus as Savior. And I put down the name to remember them, to pray for them again and again. Now, wait a minute. Witnessing is compassionate. And you should say, oh, God, give me compassion. I want to see people saved. I want to see people come to the Lord. I want your will to be done. I want you to use my life and make it to be what it ought to be for the glory of God. I've talked tonight for these few moments about the exciting life. Exciting life. I'm 91. Happy for it. Praising God for the joy of the Lord. Happy in every open door that's given to me. Happy for every good thing that God does for me day by day. Thousands of them. And I rejoice. But the excitement of walking with Him, living for Him, serving Him, going forward, waiting for His coming. He may come at any moment. I will come again. And He's coming. Now, the exciting life is a life of faith. What about your faith? Is it strong? Have faith in God. Know that God cannot lie. Rest on the Word. Again, the exciting life is the life of prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. The exciting life is the life of witnessing. Witnessing for Christ. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. The exciting life is the life of waiting upon the Lord. For He said, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now that's the word I want you to have tonight on this simple theme of the exciting life. The exciting life. Live the exciting life. Live a life that stirs you and moves you and sends you on to do great things for God. Live a life that will challenge others in your family, in your neighborhood, in your church, in your Sunday school. Challenge others to be what they should be for God. Live the exciting life. Be stirred in your heart. Move. Don't settle down. Don't give up. Don't say it can't be done. But just keep on doing what God says. And God bless you. May we pray together. Heavenly Father. 
We pray now for your blessing to be upon everyone in this auditorium. We pray that all of us will sense the very nearness of our Lord and will say, Lord, thy will be done with me. And dear Father, we pray tonight for any who are in this company who are unsaved. And at this very moment of time, they'll take Christ as Savior. They'll say, now, I'm a sinner lost and undone, but I will receive Christ as my Savior and be born again through faith in Him. But to the multitude here tonight who are saved, may they live for Christ. May they honor Him in every way. May life be exciting, exciting, night and day, walking with the Lord, talking with the Lord, serving God. Bless every heart. Stir every one of us. Make this a time of dedication of every life, of every talent, of every ability to the glory of God. Heads without eyes are closed. How many tonight with your heads bowed? You're saying, Brother Robertson, pray for me. I've got a special need in my life. A special need in my life. Please pray for me. Would you raise your hand? God bless you. Balcony all the way around. I'm looking. You see, God specializes in helping the folks in need. And God will help you. Yes, He will. Now take your need to the Lord. You've got a need. Now rest upon Him. An exciting life is a life of faith. Have faith in God. And know that God will be with you. Now, Father, bless these friends. God, each one of us, that we might do Thy will. Keep us humble. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit for power, for witnessing, for service. Bless now this church, all of its people, the pastor, the leaders. We pray for all of them, for the school. Have your own way. Guide us, we pray, by the Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake. Amen and amen.